Hello everyone and welcome again. My name is Haley McEnany and I am the Parent and Family Engagement Assistant in the Office of the Dean of Students. I am thrilled to have you all here today and to moderate our UD Parent and Family Connect regarding commencement, senior week, and beyond. The UD Parent and Family Connects were developed to allow faculty and staff to connect with families so that students can be well supported. We will give a 30 minute presentation by our topic experts. For the remaining 20 to 30 minutes, families will be able to submit live questions in the Zoom Q&A feature. I encourage families to hold their questions until the presentation finishes their content. The presentation was designed by my fellow panelists and from questions families submitted in advance. Today, we will focus on senior week, commencement ceremonies, and how students and families can stay engaged with UD after graduation. Today, we will hear from a few of my colleagues across campus. We have Carl White, Assistant Director of Programming at the University Student Centers, who will talk about Senior Week and other ways for your graduating student to celebrate their accomplishments. Then we will hear from Beth Brand, who is the Vice President and University Secretary. She will discuss commencement ceremonies, both what your students need to do in advance and what to expect day of. Then we will hear from Lauren Simeon, the Associate Vice President for Alumni Engagement. She will discuss how both you and your student can stay engaged with UD beyond graduation. You are all Blue Hens forever. After the presentation, we will transition to the question and answer portion. Families using Zoom's webinar feature may submit typed questions at any time within the Q&A section of the Zoom. However, as I already said, we encourage you to wait for the presentation to be over as they may already answer your questions. Questions may be answered live by our panelists are within the text chat by a selection of my colleagues. The combination of live answers and typed responses will allow us to answer as many questions as we can in the time provided. Thank you again, everyone, for being here today. With that said, I'm ready to hand it off to Cara. Cara. Uh, good evening, families. Um, thank you, Haley. As she mentioned, my name is Cara White, Assistant Director for Programming with the Student Centers, and I'm really excited to share with you all some opportunities for your graduating seniors for next week. If you go to the next slide, um, I will share our overview of what we have planned for our graduating seniors. Uh, I'll give a quick recap for um, all the events that we have going on for next week, and then I'm going to highlight some of our signature events. And so, um, as you can see here, this is the full schedule for next week. And so beginning on May 9th, which is Monday, we will have a senior cap decorating party. Uh, this is in conjunction with the uh, University of Delaware Alumni Association. It will take place in the Trebon NPR from 5 p.m. to 7.30. There will be a DJ, some refreshments, and um, supplies for your students to decorate their caps. On Tuesday, we're going to have some free ice cream on the Perkins patio. We're calling it You Dairy Coop Scoop. This is a tradition um, that we do each uh, Tuesday. We have a Coop Scoop uh, sort of situation with the programming board, and this uh, Tuesday will be centered and tailored all for our graduating seniors. Um, Wednesday and Friday, we have some signature events that I'll talk about in the next slide, but I'll just go ahead and highlight um, Thursday, which will be the bags and goodies events, which is essentially um, celebrating the blue and gold uh, spirit um, in tradition on, on campus with our school colors. And so we'll be in the Perkins concourse, we'll be giving out blue and gold bags with blue and gold candy and blue and gold goodies so that um, students can kind of make their own take and make tote and have that to, um, you know, honor their celebration. Everything that we're doing for this week is centered around our theme of senior slumber party, um, hashtag to be a kid again. And so we're hoping that uh, our students are able to kind of throw back into some nostalgic moments while they're looking to celebrate uh, graduating from University of Delaware and um, embarking on a new chapter. So on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about the senior sunset. This is one of our signature events for this year. It is open to um, all of our graduating seniors. RSVP is required. This will take place on Wednesday, May 11th from 6 to 8 p.m. on the North Green. Um, and basically students can come out. It is a nice outdoor picnic that has um, kind of a fancier setup. Think like an outdoor wedding situation. We'll have some photo opportunities. We'll have some acoustic live music. It'll be a three course meal for them. And of course, some photo opportunities for them. So this is um, a great um, opportunity for your su students to get together with friends, maybe take some photos, some of those last minute graduating photos and just have like a nice ambiance to celebrate um, their graduation. And it's going to take place on the green um, and hence the senior sunset. We want to watch the sunset at the end of the event. 
And then on Friday, on the next slide, we have our annual senior fling um and we're calling this our um senior fling slumber party and so this will feature a throwback artist every year we do an annual celebration on the north green where we have inflatables we have free food um free giveaways and a performance from a throwback artist and this year we'll have the plain white tees this event is free and open to all of our seniors. We'll have raffle prizes for students who show up in pajamas. Um, there'll be some special door prizes given away for that. But this is a great opportunity just for them to kick back and relax before going into finals week where they can enjoy some free music and some free giveaways um, and just enjoy themselves with their fellow Blue Hens. And that is all the events that we have for senior week. Everything is free and open to all of our seniors. And the only thing that requires the RSVP is the senior sunset. Thank you, Cara. Beth, um, be sure to take it away for commencement. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm Beth Brand, and I'm the Vice President and University Secretary and also a graduate of UD. I'm happy to be here with you this evening, and you can advance the slide, Haley. Um, so we're very excited to welcome you um, to celebrate your graduates this, this May 28th um, at our and, and, and the surrounding events um, for our commencement. Uh, please, I, you know, I'll start off stressing our website, which will have the most up-to-date information, as you can imagine. Um, first of all, we're delighted to, um, to be welcoming um, President Joe Biden, uh, our most, one of our most distinguished alumni. Uh, to, to be our commencement speaker and to deliver the commencement address. It'll be the first time at UD that a sitting president um, will be delivering the commencement address. And, um, but as you can imagine, this will, um, you know, there's a lot of details, uh, additional security and various items that will be kind of rolling out in the coming weeks. Uh, so please hang on to this website uh, address and check it frequently. And especially the day of, the day before, a couple of days before, just to know what um, what some of the, the requirements will be to, to enter and to, to have a great experience with us. Um, and if you go to the next slide. Um, so, you know, you've probably uh, been getting information through your student, through your graduate, your pending, your, your soon to be graduate. And um, I wanted to give you a brief overview um, about you know, commencement and convocation. Commencement is our main ceremony Saturday, the 28th uh, at 9.30 a.m. And that is where the official conferral of the degree of degrees happens. And that's celebrating the entire class of 2022. Convocations this year are organized by, um, by college and various other affinities, and they will take place the week leading up to, um, to commencement, and, and there's a couple right after commencement. And at convocation, your student and your graduate, well, that's the opportunity for their personal recognition, where we welcome graduates to, to walk, so to speak, and, um, and then th learn more about um, the college or the, the area that they're celebrating that day. Uh, our ceremonies are last roughly between, uh, you know, an hour and a half to three hours, depending on the, the size of the college. Um, and the commencement ceremony should be about, um, you know, no more than two hours, uh, we believe. Um, these events are rain or shine. They take place in a number of venues that are outdoor and indoor. The commencement event will be in the stadium on, on that Saturday and will be rain or shine. Um, please remind your graduate to um, for the regalia to go to the UD bookstore and pick it up. Um, other uh, you know, exciting things that day, uh, Grad Images is a company that will be on site to take photographs of students. And um, we want to just let you know that that, that will be available to you um, for purchase and um, we'll have students photos eat at each convocation. I'd like to jump into ticketing. Uh, um, all of our venues are general seating and the initial ticket window uh, will close on Saturday. So please make sure your graduate has reserved their tickets. Um, we will make announcements about obtaining additional tickets after the ticketing window closes on the 7th. And we do anticipate some extra tickets becoming, becoming available for convocations. Um, we cannot guarantee it, but we'll do our best um, to accommodate everyone. Um, let me see, parking. <laughs> We've had a lot of questions about parking. Uh, we will, parking will be available um, for commencement on South Campus. 
expect to be directed to the closest available parking spot. Uh, shuttles are available to, to transport you and your and your guests. And um, if you're directed to park in a lot that might be across the street or a little bit further away from the stadium, and all of our shuttles are ADA accessible. There will also be golf carts uh, available to assist guests who may have difficulty walk, walking in long distances. And convocation parking will be dependent upon the location of the ceremony. Um, all of the University of Delaware parking lots will be open and parking will be complimentary. And, and um, that does not include just note uh, the, the street parking in the city of Newark that, that will not be complimentary, um, but we'll be adding parking maps uh, to the website this week for your convenience. Security, we anticipate um, opening gates very early the day of commencement, um, possibly around 6 a.m., but this will be another thing that we'll, you know, we're working closely with the White House and um, we'll need to post that information as the date draws near. And, um, but, but my, my, I encourage you to consider uh, coming as early as possible uh, and to, to make sure that you have a chance to, to get through security um, and, and enter the stadium. All uh, guests are required to have tickets and you'll be required to go through a magnetometer upon entry, entry. and it could take time. And so we're, again, we're advising you to get there as early as, as, as possible. And we'll give you that, those, those um, recommended times of arrival shortly. Um, there's a number of prohibited items um, given the additional security. So the general rule of thumb is to bring as little as possible to the stadium. Uh, bags won't be permitted, flowers not permitted inside the stadium, liquids of any kind um, or empty bottles, but there will be food and beverage available for sale inside the stadium. Um, in terms of accessibility, all of our venues are ADA accessible. And um, there is ADA seating available at all venues. And if your graduate did not select ADA seating when they reserve tickets, please have them contact commencement at udel.edu. Um, there will be handicapped parking at venues and uh, for guests with um, hang tags and placards. And the website will be again updated as we get closer with further handicapped parking instructions. Generally, we're you know we are so excited to to have um, to to welcome you and your families and celebrate this really special time. And you know while while we're very honored to have our commencement speaker have the president speak at our commencement, um, it will have an impact on on our experience, and we'll do our best uh, to 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 make it as a pleasant experience as possible. And um, and so that you'll have a wonderful weekend celebrating your graduate and um, preparing them to go off into the, to, to the worldwide Blue Hen Network um, upon graduation. All right, well, good evening, everybody. I'm Lauren Simeone, Associate uh, Vice President for Alumni Engagement at the University of Delaware. Excited to be here with you tonight. Next slide, please. I'm sure it's hard to believe that just in a few short weeks, your students are going to join a very powerful powerful network of almost 200,000 living Blue Hen alumni. We're looking forward to welcoming your students into our Blue Hen network and to celebrate their accomplishments at graduation. Their ability to connect and give back their time, talents, and treasure to UD will definitely vary throughout their life. And we know that. We realize that. We work hard to be relevant and meaningful throughout all the stages of life and their various needs. Tonight, I'm going to touch briefly on showing your pride, connecting through events, ambassador and volunteer roles, professional success, and keeping in touch. Next slide, please. So there are lots of ways that someone could show their pride for UD, wearing UD gear, flying a UD flag, using a UD mug or koozie. You just never know how your outward display of love for UD will start a conversation and make a connection. We encourage you to share UD news with others, speak positively about UD, and encourage others to apply to UD. Um, another way is you can make a gift. Today is actually the university's fifth annual I Heart UD Giving Day, and we're excited to see that we're on pace to um, hit our goals of 6,000 6, donors today. Next slide. So when talking about events, we definitely saw um, the last few years um, causing us to shift how we typically present events. We're definitely still living in a hybrid world with some virtual and some in-person. 
Um, our signature events on campus continue like homecoming and alumni weekend. We're very excited to have alumni weekend coming back in person this year. That's June 3rd through the 5th. And your students are more than welcome to be joining us for that special celebration. In areas around the country, we are having events in areas with large concentrations of blue hens, many geared for younger alumni and that unique stage of life. Our virtual events are often free and recorded for future viewing. We've had uh, events like cooking demonstrations, trivia nights, and some behind the scenes look at um, fun things happening on UD's campus like a creamery tour, which was very popular. We also launched a virtual book club in 2020, which has been very popular. Next slide. When the time is right, there are a variety of ways that our alumni can serve as ambassadors or volunteers. There's ways to engage with their college or department, with a particular student group or club or an affinity group that meant something to them while they were a student here, um, perhaps a nursing alumni network, a veterans group, black alumni organization. There's so many to choose from. We do connect with our blue hens via their career or profession or a particular industry. We have a lot of blue hens that will offer job shadow and internship opportunities to our current students. And every alum is available to connect with other alums and students through our UD Career Acceleration Network. Uh, that's a great place for Blue Hens to connect about career related topics. As I mentioned around events, we do have Blue Hen networks around the country. They all have their own Facebook groups. Alumni can serve as a point of contact for Blue Hens in the area and help plan things like happy hours and special events for other Blue Hens. And then when it comes time, the next five years will go very quickly, but when it's time for their fifth reunion, we're always looking for ambassadors um, for the from the class to help us encourage others to attend and help set the agenda for the evening. Next slide. So it's definitely, I'm sure, front of mind in terms of that first job for your student after graduation. Um, last year, we definitely saw that a lot of employers began posting far more sort of in-time opportunities. Um, and that's really continued to this day where um, employers are really looking to make pretty quick hires. They're still continuing to do some virtual recruiting, um, which is helping with an applicant pool. And the positions are definitely being filled more quickly to help meet demand. Graduates seeking employment are entering into an improved job, job market, which is great. And um, they'll be more in demand once they're able to fill positions. So the Career Center offers resources and services for all alumni whenever needed, no matter the year or the major. Alumni can access one-on-one -on -one virtual career coaching with industry specialized career professionals. Um, graduates do maintain access to our Handshake platform where employers actively recruit young alumni. Career fairs and recruiting events have, have remained hybrid in some cases. Um, that definitely be, was a preferred recruiting model for employees. And again, all graduates have access to almost all of the same resources like Big Interview, which is an online interview preparation tool that provides um, the students with complete training course. Um, so you're encouraged to push your students to use the Career Center um, and the resources that are available to them through the team of folks that work in that area. And you can contact them at udcareers at udel.edu. Next slide. So we're always looking for our blue hens just to keep in touch with us and share news. Sharing news with UD, whether it's a new location, a new job, some sort of special recognition like an award or promotion, as life brings things like weddings and babies, we love to brag about all the great things our blue hens are doing, but we have to know about it in order to be able to brag about it. So we encourage our alums to follow us on social media, some of which are geared specifically toward alumni, but many others are um, just an opportunity to connect with something that's either an interest or a passion. It's important that your student um, notifies us of the right contact information, specifically an address that city and state really matters when it comes to things like regional activities. And the last thing we want to be doing is communicating it about events in the Baltimore area when your graduate is living in New York City. We do communicate mostly by email, but we do sometimes communicate via text to a cell phone number and sometimes by mail. And we encourage your graduates to visit udell.edu slash alumni dash friends for additional resources, information about events and ambassador roles, how to update uh, contact information and just other information that's relevant to alumni. 
So again, we look forward to celebrating our newest alumni as they join those ranks of 200,000 here on May 28th. Well, thank you so much, Cara, Beth, and Lauren. Um, I did have some news from Residence Life and Housing that I wanted to share as well. Um, for all of our seniors who are living in the residence halls, residence call halls do close at 10 p.m. on Thursday, May 26th, but graduating students can request a late stay via the My Housing portal. So make sure that your residential students are doing that. Graduating seniors who request that late stay may stay until 6 p.m. on Saturday, May 28th. If you have a non-graduating senior student who also lives in the halls, they can ask their residence hall coordinator to be granted an exemption to stay late. Um, if you have any more specific questions based on your students' specific needs or concerns, please be sure to call 302-831-4663 or email reslife-housing at udell.edu and they'll be able to help you out from there. Um, so with that being said, we can advance to the next slide. I'd love to open up the evening for questions. I've already seen some come in through the Q&A, which is wonderful. So um, as we know, there are restrictions on what is going to be allowed in the stadium for safety concerns. So I think the first question that I'd like to tackle is, and I'm sorry if you mentioned this before and we missed it, Beth, but is there restrictions on uh, photography equipment in the stadium? Photography equipment will be permitted um, and we'll have more details on that, but, but we believe at this point it is allowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So I also and I can jump in, Haley. I saw a couple other questions about water bottles, um, empty or filled are prohibited. Um, we will be giving more guidance, but but also bags, purses of any sort. Um, you know, I think right now the list is pretty small, limited to photo equipment, iPhones, cell phones, um, and that that sort of item. You know, personal items of that sort. No umbrellas, um, and we will be working to make um, you know ponchos available in case of inclement weather. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, for some folks who may not be able to make it here in person, um, is there going to be a live feed uh, available for those to watch their student graduate? There will be. Uh, college convocations will have a live feed and so will the commencement. So yes. Um, and I, I think I'm safe in saying that it's the UD Live website um, and we'll make sure we share that link that day on the commencement page. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and that was definitely something that we can share via the Blue Hen Family Hub as well. Um, so um, if a student graduated in December, do you know if they will have their name read at convocation as well? Um, that is a good question. I believe the answer is yes, and I will double check on that in a second and get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I do see some questions about, I know that um, it's basically limited to just cell phones, but um, for potentially elderly individuals, um, is there more comfortable seating available at the stadium besides just the um, regular stadium seats? Um, that's a good question. I know we will have specific ADA seating um, and there are some areas that have have different types of seating, so I'd have to get back to you on exactly what you know what's available um, for those who might require it. Um, we believe again, stay tuned for the full list of accepted items, but that seat cushion cushions will be allowed. Um, so okay. stay tuned, but we're hoping that that's the case. So everyone's got to go to the UD bookstore and buy a UD seat cushion, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see what else we have coming in. Um, and Haley, just to confirm, I, yes, if you graduated uh, um, in in December, you you will your name will be read at the convocation. Awesome. Um, and I saw some questions. Um, there are no restrictions for the convocation ceremony when it comes to bags and all of that sort because this is for the president, correct? Correct. We will, if there's anything required at those, we will also post that on the website, but, um, but there will not be the same restrictions at the convocation as there are at commencement. Okay. 
All righty, let me see if there's anything else marked to answer live. Um, I apologize. Um, so for Cara, um, is there a link specific for students to be able to RSVP for the senior picnic? Yes, so students have access to a portal online called um, Student Central and all the events are posted there. They're also posted on the social media pages of the crew, which is at the crew UD, but the exact RSVP link is on Student Central. So your student just logs on with their normal UD ID and um, they can click the event and RSVP there. Awesome. Um, and as well, jumping back over to graduation, um, how will students be get receiving their diploma after they graduate? It's usually received by mail um, and they will get it, I wanna say in early August is when they will receive the official diploma. Yeah, that was my case, so. <laughs> um, um, so for parking, Obviously there are going to be shuttles that will deliver folks from um, different parking areas that may be further away from the stadium. Mm -hmm. But do you anticipate having enough parking for everyone in attendance? We do. We anticipate making sure we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I see a few questions about the arrival time and I, you know, I, I'm feeling badly that we can't give you an exact time yet. Um, we, we will certainly have that time soon. Um, that since it starts at 9.30, we're, we're encouraging, you know, just to keep on your radar as early as a 6 a.m. arrival, as a 6.30, 7 a.m. arrival, because we just don't know, um, you know, it's gonna take to, to move roughly 20,000 people through um, security, it will take time. So I would just get it on your radar now to that it's gonna be an early morning. Um, which just means a longer day of celebrating, right? <laughs> there you go, Haley. <laughs> um, and Beth, do you have a recommendation for what time graduates should be arriving that morning? We will have that recommendation, um, but I don't have it yet. Okay. All righty. So, yep. Um, and then, I apologize. Um, Cara, where are students able to find these promotional materials for senior activities and senior week so that they can be sure to make sure that they attend all of them? So all the information is listed on Student Central. I'm actually going to drop the link um, on one of the responses I, or one of the questions I saw here. But everything is posted on Student Central and also on Instagram, Facebook, and at the crew UD.com. So um, or if your student wants to stop by the office to um, meet our student programmers that put these events on, they can do that and get some, you know, kind of insider information on when we'll do some random giveaways. And that office is located um, in Perkins Student Center, room 19J. But everything is on Student Central. All the event details for every specific event taking place next week. And Beth, um, if there is somebody, is there a way to guarantee that folks who need accessible seating will be able to find them um, in the stadium that morning? Yes, yes. Okay. We will make sure it's it's available. Mm -hmm. okay. I just didn't know, I wasn't sure what, what the nature of the seats, if it's, you know, um, folding chair, you know, I'm just not exactly sure the type of seats for comfort, but um, there will be ADA seating available. Plenty of it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay. Um, Lauren, are our graduates able to attend alumni weekend, which is shortly after graduation? Absolutely. We encourage um, alumni, including our most recent alumni, the class of 2022 to attend as well as parents, friends, family members, community members. So we do not discriminate. We encourage everyone to join in on the fun. Alrighty. Um, all 
All right. As I'm searching through these questions right now, feel free to add any more information that you think is um, relevant for our families. Um, and we are trying to get to these via chat as well for the more specific questions. Oh, um, do we have any restrictions when it comes to COVID-19 policies during Great. our... Great question. Um, as of right now, I can preface everything with that um, get during this pandemic because things changed kind of quickly. Um, there will not be COVID restrictions at the stadium. Um, there will, you know, masks are not required. Social distancing is not required right now, but certainly if people want to wear masks, they're welcome to. Um, and, but right now there is no, um, there are no policies in place for that. All right. And we have a fun one. Um, are we allowed in the stadium? This might be a no, but if somebody had a giant head photo of their student, would that be allowed to be brought into the stadium? I thank you for asking that question because I am not sure and we will find out and make sure that that is um, any kind of signage, fat heads, that sort of thing. Um, make, in, in our list of prohibited items, um, I did, I'm not sure I saw signage, but let me, um, nope, no signs or banners. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> But you can always keep them, them in your car. car. <laughs> exactly. And I think for the flowers as well, I know we want to gift our graduates flowers, but definitely keep them in the car. And that can be a fun surprise when they walk out of the stadium that you have flowers waiting for them. Um, let me see if there's anything else marked. Oh, yes. And bring them to convocations as well. Um, is, are we, so for students arriving to the ceremony, um, are they expected to rise, arrive independently of their families or is this just kind of like a family to family decision of how their students gonna get there? Um, I, I'd say it's family to family. We will be very clear about if there's a different time required. Uh, again, every, you know, student, there, there is not a procession this time. Students will get there and go to their seat, you know, go, go into this, the, onto the field for the seating. Um, so if there's any differential in time, we will let you know. Um, but given how early we believe it, we'll, people will need to get there, um, it's it's probably fine to go together. Um, so, um, and do you know if a student is graduating with distinction mm -hmm. or has any um, awards that they are receiving for their diploma? Is that going to be something that's also read out at graduation, or is that going to be celebrated at smaller ceremonies? That's typically celebrated at the smaller ceremonies, um, so it won't be you know called out specifically at commencement. Um, and a great question is, would hats be allowed um, at graduation on Saturday? That is a great question. Um, I hope so. So yeah, let me take a look real quick. Um, don't think I saw hats, but we'll let you know. Absolutely. Um, for folks who do have a handicap placard, um, will there be parking attendants to be able to direct them to those handicapped spaces? Yes. Okay, beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and the parking maps should indicate that as well. Absolutely, and we will definitely make sure to share that with you all prior to graduation weekend. All right. Okay. So I am seeing that a lot of these questions were probably submitted as we were answering other ones that have already been answered, which is great. Um, and then um, some folks are wondering um, if you know exactly when extra tickets will be released. I know that you were saying that that would be most likely for convocations and not commencement, correct? So what we're going to do is evaluate, Saturday is the deadline, uh, Saturday, May 7th, for students to, to go on and claim their seats. So what will happen is we will evaluate um, shortly after Saturday, uh, you know, and, and determine if there are enough tickets to, to, um, to reallocate and allow people to, to claim extra tickets. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, we, so next week sometime, we should know. 
Um, for family members who do have one individual who um, needs ADA accessible seating, is there going to be seating available for other families to be close to that individual? And I'm sorry if this is putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, I believe so. Um, I think we we definitely try to um, to to see families to you know not to separate people and to allow them um, to be together. So um, we'll do our best to do that. It is general admission, so it, that might be more possible um, in that environment where it's not assigned seats. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then when it comes to presenting tickets, would those be able to be presented digitally or printed or both? That's, it's both. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really, I think your preference, if you want to print them and feel sick, more comfortable having them um, printed, or you can, uh, you know, use them in, in your wallet. I believe they're downloadable into the wallet, um, like, a, like a football game, so um, and will students, so at a convocation ceremony, students typically do um, process long stage and have their name read. Is that something that's to be expected at commencement as well? Yes. Uh, at commencement? Yes. No, no, not at commencement. So that will happen at convocation. Um, commencement will be a more, uh, you know, general recognition of graduates kind of standing up, that sort of thing. But we will not process, uh, the graduates will not process at commencement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I kind of tricked you on that one. No, sorry. that's okay. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. Um, is so. I'm sorry if you mentioned this before, and I'm I'm forgetting. But um, it, so if we have the professional photos available of students um, at convocations, is there a way to access those photos after the ceremony? Yes, there is. And we will be sure to share that with you. Okay. The company is called Grad Images, but there, there's probably a specific link to the to the UD uh, photos and we can share that. And then one more clarification on the bags for uh, commencement. It, it's no bags at all, even if they're clear? Even if they're clear. Yeah, and no, no camera bags, no no bags of any sort. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, and so I believe that the questions that we have available have been answered and we'll also be sure to save the recording of this. So if you didn't catch an answer, be sure to, um, we'll be sharing the recording of this session within the next week um, on the Bloom Family Hub and also the Parent and Family Engagement website. So you can always check back there. There are also awesome FAQ. The commencement website is so awesome for the FAQs. It's really detailed and wonderful. So you can find a lot of those questions here as well. And within the next week, we will definitely be sure to be following up with all of you. Um, does anybody else see any questions here that um, we want to shout out before we finish up for the night? Okay. Oh, yeah. So I do see one that I think is important. Um, so the shuttles, do you know how often they'll be running, where they'll be headed um, for folks who may need some transportation from the stadium from parking? I don't know how often um, they'll be running for um, to, to the parking lots. I mean, it li likely, you know, very frequently before and after the ceremony. Um, there, there are shuttles for, there, there will not be shuttles for students um, this year, and mainly because we, it's very difficult to get them back um, by shuttle in the, in the crowd of parking, um, with the parking crowds. So um, students will need to make other arrangements, and they are able to drive as well if they have a vehicle, um, since parking is free. So. Um, another question, um, which I think is probably a common one, is if a student was able to get unused commencement tickets from a friend, would they be able to use those tickets when entering into the stadium? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
Okay. Okay. Well, again, I'd love to thank all of you for attending tonight. Um, I, I know that um, we have awesome professionals here who are definitely working to make sure that all of these questions will be answered via FAQ page or um, we will get, be getting back to you when it comes to ticketing and other information as the event gets closer. Excuse me, Haley. Oh yeah, go ahead. One other question I've seen a few times as I'm scanning really quickly is, will, will uh, guests be able to make the 1230 convocation? Um, and, and the answer to that is yes. Um, and we are, we're working on a, the timing of that might adjust back to one so that there is enough time to end the commencement and get to the convocation. Uh, the convocation is adjacent to the stadium. So you'll be parked once and be able to walk over um, for the, the convocation um, for, I believe it's for ag and natural resources at 12, or it's now one. Um, and we'll be working on making sure we confirm all those times with everybody. That is important. <laughs> um, and then I do see um, it. So all students should be connecting with the bookstore for any types of regalia to wear. Is that including like honors cords and dean's list situations and things like that? Uh, the, the the special um, cords and and any other um, stoles that sort of thing are usually coordinated through the various um, affinity. It wouldn't be the bookstore, mm -hmm. um, but um, in regards to the, it's it's a little bit different for each um, area. So um, the student, the graduate, should get in touch with their um, their college or their um, their advisor on on the best place to to get their decoration. That makes sense. Um, do you think that if um, there are individuals who are elderly or potentially just need a mess walking, <laughs> is it possible for folks to drop off those individuals closer to the stadium and then find parking? I believe we're working on that. Um, it might, it, it, right now, I think the plan is, I'm almost certain that the plan is to make sure that um, shuttles and golf carts are, can get to those people um, if they're to, if you know if they've if they had to park far away to make sure we can get them um, to the stadium and we, we will do that we will be taking care of our guests so um, when it comes to commencement we know that the stadium will be open around six a.m. but when it comes to the convocations do you know how early access will be provided for those? That's a great question. Um, let me see. Okay. Um, I d we will post that. It is. It varies for the um, for each one, and the schedule will be posted this week. So we'll get very clear on that on the website within the week. And. Um, so someone's asking for a clarification for parking. Mm -hmm. um, since we know that parking will be available the 26th through the 28th in all of campus, um, is that correct? Are there any more dates that we might be missing? Um, that's correct. Well, the 20, let me see, we'd be, it's the 26th through the 28th, correct? It's Thursday, it's starting Thursday through Saturday. Okay. So parking would not Lots be available for that Sunday then? No, okay. no. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, obviously, since there are no bags, folks are, of course, able to carry things in their pockets. I saw that that was a common question as well. Um, is there any more clarification around taking anything into the stadium? We're, we are working now on a comprehensive list of that's very detailed about what can and can't um, make it make its way into the stadium. We're also, um, you know, just trying to to make sure we can be as accommodating as possible to our guests. So um, stay again. Sorry to say, stay tuned for that, but that will be on. Um, we will put a very detailed list on our website in in the next week or two, um, but certainly with enough time for planning before the event. 
Um, do you happen to know the number of how many students will be graduating? Well, I believe it is roughly 4,000. If you, you're getting me on the exact number, someone might be able to put that in the chat <laughs> <laughs> or text it to me. <laughs> it's about 4,000. Which is very exciting. Um, Okay. <laughs> Cara or Lauren, is there anything else that you'd like to share about Senior Week or connecting with UD? No, I just would encourage all of you to um, have your students come out, tell them it's a great opportunity and something being planned for them. And so um, take advantage of their last hurrah of free stuff from the university before they graduate. Absolutely. College is the one time where you'll get a lot of free stuff. So tell them to take advantage. <laughs> um, okay. Will there be any refreshments inside of the stadium for individuals who are not able to bring in um, water or anything like that? We plan to have the concession stands open, um, but I have seen a few suggestions in the chat. Um, so again, we'll, we'll let you know if there's anything further than, than that available. Okay. And just to clarify, do the students will also have to arrive by the same time um, just to be there as when it begins, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and then um, I know we somewhat touched on this before, but there is not going to be the same amount of security for convocations, uh, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Okay. And then if you have um, a specific request or a specific concern that's personal to your family, I would highly suggest emailing um, either families at udall.edu or commencement at udall.edu. Um, and that way we'll be able to work with you and see what accommodations we could possibly make or chat with you about the specific situation. Um, but with that being said, um, I don't know if I'm seeing anything else to um, answer besides in the chat. Um, does anyone have any last minute um, notes to make about the ceremony? No, just to know that we're really proud of our graduates and um, I, know, I know you all are too. And we really look forward to celebrating that, that over the weekend and in the coming weeks and, um, and Look forward to it. Look forward to seeing you there or um, you seeing us on the Zoom or, or on the web, um, on the live feed, if you're not able to make it or your family is not able to make it. Exactly. And we will definitely be sharing more information about the live feed and about some of the unanswered questions for tonight via the Blue Hen Family Hub in the coming weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Um, so I want to conclude our time by saying thank you all to the families and parents. We appreciate your patience and your dedication to your students' success, and we see all of you as our partners as well. Um, I want to thank you to the University Media Services, to my colleagues responding to questions in the chat, and of course, my awesome, lovely panelists. Um, you all being here is extremely important to our students and families, so thank you. So. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. I hope you all have a great evening um, and good night. Congratulations to your students.